Picture this, it's a quiet evening, and you're nestled on the couch, bathed in the soft glow of your old CRT television set. The year is 1987, and you're about to embark on a journey to the final frontier. The iconic theme music fills the room, and the stars streak across the screen, heralding the arrival of Star Trek, the next generation. Do you remember that feeling? The anticipation as you tuned in to see Captain John Luke Picard command the US Enterprise D, exploring strange new worlds, seeking out new life and new civilizations. It was more than just a TV show, it was a voyage of imagination, a glimpse into a future where humanity had transcended its earthly limitations. Perhaps it was the camaraderie of the crew, the unwavering wisdom of Data, the charm of Commander Riker, or the indomitable spirit of Worf. Or maybe it was those thought-provoking moral dilemmas, the ethical quandaries that left you pondering long after the credits rolled. One can't help but smile at the memory of Picard's famous order, Make It So, or the android Data's quest to understand humanity. And who could forget the enigmatic Q, testing our heroes with cosmic challenges that pushed the boundaries of possibility. But beyond the on-screen adventures, Star Trek, the next generation left an indelible mark on pop culture, inspiring generations to embrace the ideals of diplomacy, exploration, and unity among diverse cultures. Now, as we journey back to the future, let's uncover some fascinating facts about this beloved series that continue to resonate with fans old and new. After all, the voyage of the US Enterprise D is far from over. So, engage warp drive and prepare for a warp speed dive into the universe of Star Trek, the next generation, where the final frontier meets the limitless imagination of humanity. Get ready to boldly go where no one has gone before. In 1987, Star Trek, the next generation boldly launched into television screens, and while it became a beloved series, it had its share of behind-the-scenes surprises. One intriguing tidbit revolves around Patrick Stewart, who portrayed Captain John Luke Picard. Surprisingly, he kept his suitcases packed for the first six weeks of filming. Why? Stewart believed the show would flop and had be swiftly returning home. Fortunately, he couldn't have been more wrong, as the next generation went on to become a cornerstone of the Star Trek franchise, and Stewart's iconic role as Picard remains a fan favorite. Another fascinating fact from the Star Trek universe involves Michael Dorn, who played Worf. After the next generation concluded, Dorn reprised his role on Star Trek Deep Space Nine, making Worf the only character to feature regularly on two Star Trek series. While Chief O'Brien also appeared in both series, he held a recurring role on The Next Generation and a regular one on Deep Space Nine, setting Worf apart in this unique Starfleet double duty. Lastly, an intriguing concept that never made it into The Next Generation's set was the Grand Corridor. This ambitious idea aimed to encircle the Enterprise DS saucer section, but was scrapped due to its high maintenance costs. However, this idea found new life in the form of Star Trek, the experience, the Klingon encounter, showcasing how creativity in the Star Trek universe can endure, even when initial plans fall through. The next generation continues to be a cherished part of the Star Trek legacy, with its cast and stories leaving an indelible mark on science fiction television. In 1987, the iconic TV series Star Trek, The Next Generation took off, but did you know that Whoopi Goldberg expressed her interest in being on the show before it even aired? She inquired about it, but it took nearly a year for the producers to take her inquiry seriously. Initially, the show had an intriguing concept for the Q Continuum, a powerful group of beings. They planned to have numerous identical individuals, all played by John DeLancey. In the series opener, Encounter at Farpoint, this idea was apparent, with each change of costume resulting in a change in attitude and demeanor for Q, however. By Q's next appearance in Hyde and Q, this concept seemed to have been dropped, and Q acted as a single individual. Later episodes introduced other Q Continuum members played by very different looking actors, a gimmick that also continued in Star Trek, Voyager. Another interesting detail is that the ceiling of the transporter chamber on the US Enterprise D was the floor of the transporter chamber from the original US Enterprise in the original Star Trek series. These intriguing tidbits shed light on the behind the scenes and creative decisions that shaped the beloved Star Trek, the next generation series. Romulan uniforms in Star Trek, the next generation in the 1987 TV series Star Trek, 
the next generation. A popular fan theory revolves around the uniforms worn by Romulan military officers. The series itself is set in the 24th century, from 2364 to 2370, but it's the Romulan attire that has sparked intrigue among fans. Unlike Starfleet uniforms, which adhere to a strict color code indicating an individual's rank and division, Romulan uniforms appear to defy any such system. Officers from the Romulan Empire can be seen sporting a wide variety of patterns and colors on their uniforms, which doesn't seem to correlate with their positions or ranks. This peculiar aspect of Romulan attire has led to a compelling theory among fans. The patterns and colors on Romulan uniforms may represent family or clan affiliations rather than rank or position. While this theory isn't officially confirmed within the series, it has gained traction in the Star Trek community. The mystery surrounding Romulan uniforms adds an extra layer of depth to the Romulan culture portrayed in Star Trek, the next generation, which often emphasized secrecy, intrigue, and enigma. Despite the lack of concrete information within the series, fans' curiosity and imagination have filled in the gaps, making Romulan uniforms a topic of ongoing fascination. In the world of Star Trek, where every detail is carefully crafted, the Romulan uniform mystery serves as a testament to the enduring appeal of the franchise and its ability to inspire fan engagement and speculation. It's one of the many elements that make Star Trek the next generation of beloved and enduring series, even decades after its initial release. Production difficulties plagued Star Trek. The Next Generation from its inception in 1987, Star Trek, The Next Generation faced a series of production difficulties that threatened its success. The show's creator, Gene Roddenberry, suffered from a declining health condition, including strokes, hypertension, and diabetes. Despite his health issues, Roddenberry concealed his condition from Paramount Pictures, as well as the cast and crew. To assist him, Roddenberry even provided his lawyer, Leonard Maislish, with office space in the production office. However, this arrangement took an unusual turn. Maislish clashed repeatedly with the creative team, breaking into offices and computers. He even attempted to rewrite scripts, despite having no prior writing experience. Roddenberry often deferred to Maislish regarding creative decisions on hiring cast and crew. This caused tension, and when it was revealed that the lawyer had rewritten scripts, a violation of Writers Guild of America practices, he was banned from the lot. The troubles didn't end there. Original series writers David Gerald and DC Fontana quit the show due to these conflicts. Maislish also hired producer Morris Hurley as head writer and producer over Gerald and Fontana, who were instrumental in creating the new series. Hurley's leadership style clashed with the rest of the writers and the cast, leading to 30 writers quitting or being fired in the first season alone. Furthermore, Gates McFadden, who played Dr. Beverly Crusher, left the show after the first season due to creative differences. Between the first two seasons, Hurley even suggested that Paramount Pictures should fire the entire cast and effectively reset the show, but this idea was overruled. Hurley eventually departed after the second season, making way for Rick Berman, who rehired McFadden and retooled the show to focus more on character development. By this time, Roddenberry had all but retired from the show due to his deteriorating health. Tragically, he passed away during the production of season five, marking the end of an era for Star Trek, the next generation. This series journey was marked by production conflicts and a tumultuous beginning, but it ultimately found its footing, becoming a beloved and enduring part of the Star Trek franchise. It's a testament to the resilience of the show's creators, cast, and crew that they were able to overcome these initial obstacles. As we warp away from the final frontier of our discussion, I encourage you to take a moment to reflect on your own personal journey through the cosmos of Star Trek, the next generation. Whether you've been on board since its inaugural voyage in 1987 or recently discovered the series, there's something truly remarkable about the way it has touched the lives of countless fans across the galaxy. Perhaps you've marveled at Captain Picard's wisdom and diplomacy, 
found inspiration in Data's quest for humanity, or laughed heartily at the antics of Commander Riker, and the mischievous Q maybe it's the utopian vision of the future, immoral dilemmas explored, or simply the camaraderie of the crew that has left an indelible mark on your heart. So, I invite you to share your cherished memories, profound insights, or even your favorite episodes. Let us celebrate the legacy of Star Trek, the next generation together, for it is through our shared experiences that this iconic series continues to thrive. Thank you for your time and your enduring interest in this beloved part of our sci-fi tapestry. Until our next encounter among the stars, live long and prosper, my fellow travelers.